Aloha and good morning. My name is Erin and this morning I will be your worship associate. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the First Unitarian Church of Honolulu. Unitarian Universalists are united by common values of compassion, community, freedom, justice, and stewardship. Today we invite you to explore the topic of every little thing is going to be all right. We are a vibrant, growing, and busy community, so please read the announcements that are inserted in your bulletin. You might also be signed up to be receiving our weekly e-blast or our monthly newsletter. This morning, I would like to highlight a couple of important announcements. This morning and today is Mother's Day, so be sure to give thanks to your mother. For those of you who are mothers, we thank you. And to celebrate, we are going to be having lunch today following service. It is being hosted by the Cooking Dudes. And lunch is $5. If you are a guest joining us for the first time, then it will be complimentary. We also want to bring our attention to the fact that today is a multi-generational service, which means that our Keiki will be staying with us through the whole service today. Um, many of them are seated up here. If you have any young ones who want to come and join us on the carpet, um, I do want to invite the parents to make sure to save a seat for your Keiki. Once the story is over, they will return to their seats with you. And lastly, after service today, we have a young adult gathering, which is open to people who are 18 to 35 and want to join us for discussion. So we're actually going to grab food from lunch and then go upstairs to meet and celebrate together. Our opening words this morning come from Marjorie Montgomery. I can't see that. Life is a gift for which we are grateful. We gather in community to celebrate the glories and the mysteries of this great gift. Here we go. We are called. Join me in saying these words as Jonifer lights the chalice this morning. We light this chalice with the embers of compassion. We light this chalice with the torch of justice. We light this chalice with the radiance of joy. Good morning, everyone. Again, this is special time for the kids. If you guys want to join us, it's a story. You're welcome to come on up. So people often say change is hard. But I think what we mean is that change we didn't ask for is hard. Because think of a flower blooming. Think of when our wounds are healing. Think of when we're waiting for school to be out. Can you guys think of any other changes that you actually love? Go ahead. 
please you watch us when I see my battle for the summer. You can't wait to get there, right? You're like, hurry, hurry, I want to be somewhere else. So a lot of times we actually love change if we can learn to enjoy it. So here's a story written by uh, Aaron McKemrith. He's a UU minister in Santa Barbara called The Perfect Party. And I kind of changed it to suit Hawaii. And uh, Leslie and Sarah here, we're going to do a skit. And the kids have lines, so bear with us. <laughs> so Kellen was 11 when her family moved to Hawaii because her mother got a new job. Kellen missed her old neighborhood and her old school, but most of all, she missed her friends. She spent most of her time in the basement and no one knew what she was doing down there. But her parents were worried. There was only a month before school let out, so she didn't enroll in classes. But before summer started, her mom had a bright idea. Honey, I had the best idea. You'll love it. I'm thinking that since it's the last weekend before school lets out, and since I know you're worried about meeting all those new kids, I thought, wouldn't it be better to start making friends before summer starts? So I called up the school and got a list of all the kids in your class, and then I called their parents and invited them all to a giant pool party bash right in our backyard. Kellen was speechless. Isn't that great? Oblivious to Kellen's mortified expression. No, it's not great, Mom. You can't do that. I'm so embarrassed. What do any of those kids care about me or my pool? I'm so surprised, honey. And just a couple years ago, you would have been really excited about this. I see you aren't, but it's too late now to cancel. Everyone's already been invited. People are coming. Fine, we'll have a party, but I'm going to hate every minute of it. This is going to be a disaster. She trudged back to the basement. So Saturday morning rolled around to find the backyard of Kellen's house decorated and filled with fifth graders but everyone was just kind of standing around and only a couple people went swimming. Kellen knew she was supposed to do something or say something, but she didn't really know what to do. And then, one minute the sky was blue and cloudless and the next it was filling with clouds. The wind picked up and the air chilled. Everything was very still. And then, in the far distance, they heard a siren going off. Tornado! They gathered their stuff and started toward the house. Where's your basement? Asked one of the kids from the party. We need to go out. We need to go down into the basement until the warning is over. So the kids packed into the basement, but Kellen felt more embarrassed than ever, even after her mom brought down pillows and blankets to make the cement floor more comfortable. Nobody was happy. Hey, what's that? One of the boys asked. Yeah, this is cool, said a girl looking over his shoulder. Everyone looked over and saw a huge, beautiful, old-fashioned steamer trunk. It's nothing. Leave it alone, Helen blurted out, but it was too late. The kids opened up the trunk and were playing with all the old-fashioned clothes. There were small boxes of necklaces and scarves and gowns. There were hats and old letters and postcards, all tied with a faded pink ribbon. And there were lots and lots of photos, the olden day kind where nobody smiles and everything looks brown. <laughs> then, before Kellen could stop them, some girls started looking at notebooks that looked a lot newer than the rest of the stuff. Hey, stop it! Those are mine! Those are my private notebooks where I imagine the people in the photographs who used to wear all those clothes and I make up stories about them. For a moment, there was silence. Then someone said, that's so cool. Will you read us one of your stories? Before long, Kellen was not only telling stories, she was assigning parts and advising on costuming. Soon the basement was full of kids dressed in old timey clothes, carrying fancy walking sticks and acting like the people in those stories. Long after the tornado threat had passed, the kids stayed down in the basement in their own imaginary world. Kellen's party was the best party anyone could remember. Helen's mom brought down lemonade to drink and teacups in little teacups and sandwiches on a tray. <laughs> Very fancy. <laughs> and when parents started to show up, people went home reluctantly. Watching everyone leave, Kellen knew everything was going to be all right. And thanks to her mother's loving help. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Just, yeah. 
So the Book of Life is this community's way of sharing our joys and sorrows with one another, and it's our way of showing that we care for each other. And so we usually start out with the sorrows, but um, this morning we actually didn't have anyone write a sorrow, so to speak. So they're all joys, all right? Um, but we know that in our own personal lives, there may be something that we're grieving, something that we're not too happy about, or some people that are struggling with diseases and illnesses. And so as my hand moves across the sanctuary, I invite you to name aloud the names of those that you are concerned about this morning. All right, and at the same time, as I mentioned, there's a bunch of joys, so bear with me as I go through them. Um, the Rabinov and um, uh, Model family uh, would like to say that they're thrilled that Michaela is home, visiting from Chicago. And there's also a um, joy and a spirit of gratitude for the youth group room, which is now almost 90% complete and has been transformed. So we're grateful for the blinds and the rug up there um, to make it a very welcoming place for our youth. And our salon, who many of you may know, was a, a Pakistani a student that's, that this church has sponsored in the past, um, called this morning and asked to wish all of his UU family a happy Mother's Day. And in case there's anyone who doesn't already know, Charlotte and Veronica want to let you know that they're off to New York for Catherine and Jillian's graduation. And yes, they'll do it again next year for Ryan. <laughs> and there's a special mahalo to, again, the uh, William uh, Corsi and the Posse for creating a beautiful and tasty looking lunch. Jenna, it says here, is a lucky woman. But then again, so is William. <laughs> and um, next week, the Castaneros will not be at church, not because they're playing hooky, but because Zafron will be running her first triathlon. And that involves swimming, biking, and running. Yay. And so there you have it. Um, those are the joys that we have, and I'm sure there's so much more. So once again, as my hand moves across the sanctuary, please name the name of the person, animal, or any sentient being that you're joyful about this morning. <laughs> for mothers, for children that we are joyful for, for birthday celebrations that we bring this morning. We come together in a spirit of gratitude and celebration, as well as just happiness and joy and jumping up and down like Karen. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to ask us and invite us to raise our left hand, indicating the sorrows and the concerns that this community faces and take a deep breath in and out in a spirit of compassion to those people. And let's raise our right hand in a spirit of joy and take another deep breath in and out, exhibiting all our gratitude. And as our hands come together, we come in a spirit of respect to one another and to honor the spirit that each of us possesses. And let us bow to one another in this spirit. And let us let our hands go, knowing that by this time next week, there will be more joys and more sorrows. And of course, you're more than welcome to talk to one of our lay ministers if you do have something that you would like to share with them. And they're the ones that are waking, wearing their kukui nut lace. And so um, they're, we're here for you.
videos put together by a group called Playing for Change. And what they do is try to solicit musicians and singers from all across the world to help sing this one song together. And all they have in common are a pair of headphones. And so I invite you now to hear what the three little birds have to sing for us this morning.
Can we get an amen to that? (laughs) So I know that throughout the month of May, we're going to be talking about changes and transitions. And as our story for all ages indicated earlier today, change isn't always easy for a lot of us. And I'll be the first to admit that I too get very anxious, especially when there are three changes going on in my life. And this morning, I want to take a quick survey to ask if you, too, feel the same way as me or whether I'm just a freak of nature and I'm out here all by myself feeling and thinking these things, all right? So help me out here. How many of you get a little scared and anxious and fearful whenever you have to move to a new place? All right, a few of you. Well, how many of you came from another place? How many of you came to Hawaii from another location? So you know how you had to pack up all your stuff and you had to trust that the boat or the plane or whatever mode of transportation is going to get your stuff there safely, yeah? And not only that, but part of what worries me about moving is where am I going to be moving to? And what kind of work do I need to do in order to prepare the new place? You know what I mean? And how, how do I need to repaint? Do I need to um, do some um, house repair work all by myself? Or am I going to get any help doing that? So that's part of my worry about moving. And then the second um, part that I think most of us have difficulty with is a job transition. And I know for all of you children out here, you may not have a job yet, but substitute school for that. How many of you get worried if you have to change schools? Or jobs? I should see more hands. Come on, adults, help me out here. Yes, it it is indeed worrisome, isn't it? Are you going to make new friends at this new place that you're going to go to school with? And what are they going to be teaching me? And am I going to get along with the teachers at my new school? So there's a lot of various questions whenever there's a job transition. And finally, the one that keeps me up at night most of the time is when there's relationship changes. Don't worry, I didn't get a divorce from my partner or anything like that. So I, I'm not worried at this point. But relationships could mean anything other than even um, intimate relationships. So friendships, for example, if your friend decided not to talk to you anymore. But, you know, the, the, the biggest thing on our mind is about intimate relationships, is it not? So whether you're the dumpy or the dumper, how many of you get anxious about relationship changes? All right, quite a few of you. And you know how I find out about relationship changes these days? It's by going online on Facebook (laughs) and spying to see what people's relationship status is. Um, And so, anyway, these days, there's so many changes going on in our world. And what does it tell us? That over 50% of marriages these days end in a divorce, right? And so before rushing to label any of these big changes as good or bad, is there a way that we could just recognize that change is just a part of life? As long as we're living, as long as we have a world that keeps on turning and moving, change is going to happen. And so the Buddhists, being the wise people that they are, call this impermanence. And so the idea is that the more we grow attached to the results of the changes that we see, the more suffering we're going to experience. And certainly this was true in the case of Kellen in the story earlier today. So she was a little anxious about moving to Hawaii, and then her mom threw her this party, and she was starting to feel like, oh my gosh, the whole world is falling apart. Nobody's coming to my party, no one's enjoying themselves, and what am I going to do with all the changes that are going on in my life? So this is the challenge I have for all of you all this morning, for this church community, is what are we going to do in the midst of change? So I only have three suggestions for you, all right? So the first suggestion is to support one another in the midst of the changes. So how can we be companions, and how can we say to each other, I have a little bit of an idea of what you're going through, because like the rest of you who raised your hands, I, too, get a little anxious around major life changes that are going on, such as a move, a job, and a relationship change. 
And so how can we be there for each other is the first advice I would have for us. And the second is to just um, take a moment to take a look at our history as Unitarian Universalists. And pretty quickly, you'll find out that we are actually change agents. We are instigators for change in our society. We are the ones that start and bring about change. Can you imagine where our world would be if it were not for our values and if it were not for the fact that we try to live up to what Mahatma Gandhi said of being the change that we want to see in our world? Women would still be at home cooking for their husbands while the husbands bring home the bacon, yeah? Or the tofu if you're a vegetarian. And, and people of color would still be riding at the back of the bus. And people of the same gender would still not be able to marry the ones that they love. And so without positive change in our world and in our society, and without our Unitarian Universalist values being on the forefront, facilitating and assisting in that change, where do you think we would be? Which brings me to my third point. Why shouldn't we worry whenever change comes around? Because it's our values and our principles that are going to sustain us, that those values are going to be the same for all of eternity. And the reason why I know this, for a fact, as, as factual as Unitarian Universalists get, I guess, is that I, I saw a logo in a community called Lakewood, California. It says, times change, but values don't. And initially, I had a negative reaction to this logo because it had a picture of what they considered to be a traditional family of one man and one woman and a male child and a female child and a dog and a cat and a white picket fence. You get the idea, right? And so I thought, well, is this the only image of what values mean? And then I thought back to myself and said, you know, as a person of faith, as a religious person myself, I too have values. They're called the seven principles. So I value the fact that each of us has inherent worth and dignity. And I have values that we have come to know as our mission statement. I believe that boldly growing compassion, justice, and joy will never run out of steam. And it's a, it's a mission that will never be outdated and be unfashionable. Don't you think so? That in every time and every place, our message can be relevant to those seeking better wholeness in their lives and to those seeking an inclusive community. And so today, this is what the three little birds told me when I woke up this morning, the sun began to shine, and they were perched outside my window, and you know what they sang to me? They sang, don't worry about a thing, every little thing is going to be all right. And so in Hawaiian, there's a word for this, there's a phrase for this that I want you all to repeat after me. Aole pilikia. Aole pilikia. No troubles, no worries. We have faith and we have trust that in this community, when we're supporting each other, when we are being the instigators for change in our community, when we are living out our values and our mission, we need not worry about a thing because every little thing is going to be all right, maybe so.